Some might regard the announcement of an update to an audio editor as being akin to watching paint dry, or perhaps more appropriately, listening to paint dry. After all, an audio editing program isn't exactly regarded in the same attractive way as a door, such as Cubase or Logic or Sonar, etc. etc. However, after an 18-month gestation period, the release of Steinberg's WaveLab 8 sees it reinforce its position as the industry standard for broadcast quality audio editing, repairing and mastering. And therefore, because it works alongside Cubase extremely effectively, I consider WaveLab 8 to be just as desirable in my studio. So, all you amateur psychologists, make of that what you will. Despite my opinion though, if you are an existing Steinberg customer and run Cubase 7 for example as your door, well you might not regard the need for a separate audio editor as being an essential purchase. I can't argue with that, after all Cubase 7 does have its own very mature and comprehensive integrated audio editing solution. However, WaveLab 8 is aimed at a different type of user in that I feel it will be adopted more by engineers and will be given a good home in their mastering studios. And we mustn't forget that Cubase does integrate effectively with WaveLab 8 and can be instantly called up to further edit an exported mix at the check of an optional Cubase tick box. So, in this Groove 3 guide to audio editing with WaveLab 8, we'll focus on just that aspect of its dual role in a mastering studio, i.e. audio editing. As you probably know, WaveLab is designed to focus on two types of user, the first being the person who wants to edit and correct audio files, whilst the second type of user will focus on combining corrected and edited audio files into a new complete whole. And WaveLab's montage function has been designed to cater for this type of person. That's not to say that the two roles are mutually exclusive, of course they're not. In the real world, both aspects of the program are frequently employed by the same person, and this is certainly the case with individuals. However, I'm aware that larger corporations and larger studios do tend to divide the two disciplines. Anyway, regardless of how you will use WaveLab 8, in this first of the two GRU3 courses, we will focus on the audio editing and restoration side of things. In the second course, we'll explore the montage and its features. I feel this is the best approach, because the disciplines you will learn in this first course can then be adopted when using the audio montage, because the audio montage, despite having quite a number of different functions, does also contain parallel functions found in the main audio editor. However, that all said, towards the end of this first course, we'll take an overview look at the montage function, so you can see how you can integrate it into your workflow, should you be the type of user who works alone. Incidentally, when you installed your copy of WaveLab 8, you will have noticed that not only can you install to PC and Mac, there is an option to install either a 32-bit version or a 64-bit version. Or indeed, like myself, you can install both 32 and 64-bit versions on PC. Now you might be asking why install both versions, the 32-bit and the 64-bit versions. Well, I have because some of the third-party plugins I own will not run at 64-bit as of yet, and therefore, as a consequence of me still wanting to use them, I can use them in the 32-bit version. And as an aside to this, at the time of authoring this GRU3 course, there are some issues with iLock protected third-party plugins, in that some users are experiencing crashes when trying to load them in 64-bit mode. Now, I'm fairly sure that these issues will be ironed out with an update by the time you get to view this GRU3 course. But just in case you experience the same problems, let me encourage you to update to the latest incremental dot release of WaveLab 8. Anyway, now I've talked a little about WaveLab's position in the recording and mastering studio, let's have a quick look at what you'll be presented with as soon as you start the program. Once you start up WaveLab, you're going to see this general window layout splash screen. Well, I suppose it's an option dialog box really, because we've got four radio button options. I'll very quickly work my way through them with you. The first option, Restore Last Window Layout. Well, if we chose this option, then WaveLab would open up looking exactly the way it did the previous time we ran it i.e. you might have adapted where all the particular panels are, you might have got the spectrum analyzer or whatever floating in its own individual panel, that might be the way you want it. Well, by selecting this first option and then running down to OK at the bottom, then of course that's what you would see. Additionally, the last time you ran WaveLab and you had a file open, 
then you would immediately go to that particular layout with the last file or multiple files that you had open. This is useful, I suppose, if you have to take a break from editing to answer the phone or whatever, and you close down WaveLab. But on your subsequent return, you want to go back to exactly the same place and the same layout and the same files. Then this top option, Restore Last Window Layout, would take you to that. Moving down to our second radio button option, Restore Last Window Layout Without Files. Well, I'm guessing you can work that out. If you choose this option and once WaveLab opens, then everything I've just said for the top option will apply, but this time if you had any files open, then they won't be loaded up. Okay, so that's a useful option if you like the layout, but you don't particularly want to open the same files each time. The third radio button option coming down, Restore Default Window Layout. Well, if you set WaveLab up to look the way you want it to look, and then save that layout as a default, then by choosing that option would bring that up. And finally, our bottom option, Restore Factory Window Layout. Well, that's what I'm going to choose, seeing as we've not run it yet properly. And this will, of course, once we open up WaveLab, default to the way that Steinberg have programmed WaveLab so that it looks a particular way. Now, whatever you choose here, you are always going to see this General Window Layout dialog box. And that might be what you want. However, if this general window layout dialog box to you becomes a bit of a nag screen, then by checking in the checkbox at the bottom, keep answer and do not show the message again, then of course whatever you choose now, once you hit OK, will be what loads up each time. So, if you are brand new to WaveLab, what I recommend is, don't check in there until you are satisfied with the way things are and you know your way around it, so that you can recall up this general window layout, despite checking in there and saying don't show the message again. Ok, so a fairly innocuous looking dialog box, but quite an important one. And then of course all you need to do is click on OK. As a result, as you can see, WaveLab 8 opens up. And what you can see is the factory window layout, because that was the option we chose. Right, I'm going to finish up here then for this getting started tutorial, and we'll move forward, so I'll see you in a second.